Well, good morning, Tom, and good morning to Sean as well. It's the 10th of October. It's a nice sunny morning here and a lot warmer than it has been. Um, I'm getting a lot better. Uh, thank you for everybody's um, warm wishes. Um, and today I decided I would do the video on uh, my mistress. At the moment I'm in the garage because she won't have many more days left in here. Um, and uh, I just thought I would uh, go through um, some of the history before I actually do a video of the car itself. So if we just go over to the little bench here. Um, the car itself was uh, is, a, is a 1980 uh, uh, model, but it went to Hong Kong for six years and um, came back over to the UK and has had several owners, uh, but the, one of the most interesting owners uh, it's had is this chap here. So I'll just get rid of myself so we can get a better a better scan and here we have a, a guy called Malcolm Feld uh, and this is a tribute to to him um, he was a music agent for many of the pop stars of the of the 80s uh, and uh, Here's a little bit about him. <clears throat> I'll let you read this for yourself. But he was involved with some really, really big names. He was married to uh, Gina Mayer, who uh, was in Coronation Street, uh, and I believe she played Fred G's niece. Fred G, I think, I never watched Coronation Street, but I think Fred G was at, at the barman at the, uh, at the uh, wool, uh, not the wool pack, that was Emmerdale Farm. The Rover's Return, wasn't it? Here's a nice picture of Gina and uh, and Malcolm when they had the car with his own private number plate. And I do believe he had, it's not mentioned in, in these ratings, but I do believe he had some connection with um, Peter Sellers' uh, third wife, uh, whose name escapes me at the moment, oh, Lynn Frederick. Uh, I believe he had some connection with Lynn Frederick. Um, so there's just this last bit up here that I'll show you. Um, I hadn't planned to do this today actually but I felt that much better I thought it's such a lovely day because it's going to be terrible weather tomorrow 
and I believe you're going to get a real paste in an island Tom um, so it's not going to be a very nice week at all really so right we'll go and have a look at the car okay Tom we're outside now I've just opened up all the doors and the boot and the bonnet uh, so you can have a good look inside and everything so this is the type of boot we have on a Rolls Royce Silver Shadow the um, bin liners in the back here this bulky one is the foot rests for the rear of the car um, and the flat one here is uh, is the lambs wool rugs I've um, got a spare sump gasket uh, that can go on at a later date it's just one that came with the car um, and the bit of lino is what I put in just to protect the carpets a bit when we put picnic tables in so I'm going to go have a, a look inside just get these doors so this is the door cappings on the rear offside door all the door skins in good order the old cigar lighter and cig cigarette ashtray that they used to put in cars of this era so this is the rear of the car the seats, rear seats all in good order and uh, the uh, little mirror up there, I have one at each side which is illuminated all the blue carpets are original the black ones are the ones I've added um, so the headrests on the passenger seat and driver's seat quite an expensive item headrests apparently for these cars so this is the rear I'm just going round and show you the driver's side so once again door cappings in good order climb in and have a look at the dash so the mileage is is not correct because it's had two clocks but I've got it all worked out in the history but the dash is in good order one dash again um, the tops up to the uh, sun visors and the headlining is all in pristine condition I mean I've looked after it over the years but it has been looked after by previous owners obviously so that's that's the inside so I'll have a walk around and look at the at the uh, engine So, this is the engine bay, and what we've done over the last uh, umpteen weeks is we've replaced all the ignition system except the coil. The coil was fine, but everything else has been replaced completely. Now she's running so well now. Um, She's had a full service, brand new plugs, new oil, new filters, the works. So I'll just work my way around the other side. So here we, here we are at the near side of the car, Tom. Just to get a bit 
bit more video of the engine from this side. So all the choke and carburetors have been sorted. And I was on about lights, even even the bonnet light works, which is unusual for these because they sometimes stick. So that's the engine. So I'll just shut the bonnet down and just have a a look at the inside from the near side. Again, the walnut door cappings are in good order. These, with age, tend to crack and 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 splinter if you don't look after them. And all I've done is uh, basically give them a a good polish with Mr. Sheen. Um, and that seems to have done the trick. It's got a blue Everflex roof on it. These were very, very popular in the 80s on a lot of cars, especially Ford Capris. Um, and these need looking after as well because of a lot of stitching on them. And I used a, a vinyl. Uh, solution uh, and give them a good coat of that and it soaks and it keeps the uh, stitching from rotting so this is just the rear end of the near side of the car so that's the interior well shut the boot lid and we'll have a look at the exterior so here we are this is the exterior rear end of car again of course all badged up Rolls Royce Silver Shadow 2 and the uh, the bodywork on it is really remarkable for a 40 odd year old car she does need a little bit of work on the wheel arches um, especially on the near side I'll show you later because that's where it catches all the muck and grime as you're driving um, but apart from that uh, there isn't really a problem at all the odd blemish which you're bound to get um, but uh, the wheel arches and sills are um, are a weak spot on, on, a, on a Rolls Royce Silver Shadow um, but uh, we'll just work our way around the front bond it straight nice front end grills nice and straight the uh, stainless steel is in good order you must not use chrome cleaner on stainless steel that is a real big no-no the headlamp uh, washers the brushes uh, you can see that one you can't buy these anymore apparently I was told by Michael my garage fella you can't buy them so there she is, there she stands in all her glory and uh, I'll be sorry to see her go but go she has to do I don't drive it enough I'm 76 now and, and it really needs somebody else to take it on I've enjoyed all the time I've had it She's caused quite a stir and it's uh, the end of a boyhood dream. I saw my first Rolls Royce at Harrogate show when I was seven and that's when I was smitten. Right Tom, I've just remembered 
I said I would let you uh, listen to her uh, with the engine going and I, <laughs> I forgot to turn it off so this is how she sounds with the engine running um, I, the funny thing is when when you do when you do a, a video like this with an engine running it always sounds terrible I think it sounds like an old truck and it does on, on, on most cars when you you know when you uh, if you ever watch the Matthewson's program uh, uh, you know the car auctioneers at Pickering um, and, and they do them and they sound worse than what they have there's nothing wrong with them it's just it's just the, 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 I think the sound uh, from the camera really but uh, she's uh, ticking over very sweetly there and uh, and that's it yeah I have somebody interested in it. I've got to get in touch with this person, but with course, with having COVID, of course, I've had to put that off. But um, it looks like I'm going to be absolutely clear as a bell tomorrow, so I can get in touch with this person. And uh, if if they aren't interested, then she'll be going off to a good car auction. So God bless her. See you later.